Hi, I'm George Nordhaus, and welcome to Monday Morning. Each week I say Monday Morning is going to be different. Well, this one is different because it's something that we have been working on for months. And uh, it's an idea whose time has come, I think, and you're about to hear it. We're going to introduce you to our new marketing and management basics. That's the key, basics. Now, I'm going to do uh, most of the talking here so to explain it to you on, but a little later, I'll have some of our uh, uh, contributors, and you'll know many of them, uh, just to say a few words and t tell what they're going to be doing for this thing. Now, what in the world am I talking about? Well, uh, Monday morning, as you know, is the largest library of recorded marketing and management information for independent insurance agents, and it is. And it's getting bigger all the time. Uh, by the end of this year, we'll have 135 basic, not just the basic ones, but Monday mornings. The basics will be a lot more, all recorded, and we'll tell you more about that. Monday morning is, well, it's getting huge, and that's a great thing because literally uh, tens of thousands of people get this on Monday morning. They don't all open it. But I wish they would, but that's another problem. At any rate, Monday morning is about to get very, very big and I'm a whole lot larger. All right. Now, if you aren't used to searching for Monday morning, uh, here's a look at our slide. This is the uh, agenciesonline.biz. Uh, it's just one of the uh, paragraphs in there. But if you look at the menu on the left-hand side, you will see the uh, uh, Monday morning uh, basics. And it's called basics. And you can go to that or any of the other people, other things, of course, on the. But here's what you want to go for right now. Either go to basics or Monday morning. That's fine. Well, let's talk about what you're going to see there. You're going to see, for starters, about Monday morning. Let's just spend a couple of minutes on that. I said it's the largest library, and it is. I think you'll like the video. I sure like it. I think they did a wonderful job, our, our guys. Uh, and uh, it, this is the basic explanation of the whole thing. Uh, it has uh, something new that we have just added. How can I use the Monday morning to uh, the webinars to run the base business and so forth. So that's not all bad. I won't go through these with you, but just a couple of little uh, mentions of some of them, and we'll get to back. But one of, I want you to notice the bottom one down here. It introduces the basics, and you can click there when you're on Monday morning. You can go back and forth anytime, and it'll get better as we go forward. Okay. Uh, now, we did on this how to use Monday morning. It's, it's really a, kind of something I should have been doing all along, and I never really thought of it. Uh, each Monday, you take a quick look at the eye opener, and that's what you're, you've probably seen it. it I take, do that in about two or three minutes, and the reason that we do that is to let people look at it, because I know during the day, you don't have time to go to the full webinar type thing and break down and stop and start and all that. So we've done what we call the eye opener, and it's two or three minutes, and it, it tells what's going on. And my suggestion to a lot of people is if you, if you, if you wonder what's going on, just go into the eye opener and spend a couple of minutes. It can't be the end of the world for you. And then you'll want to know whether you should, uh, you know, you should have enough information on it that yeah, maybe you should tell your staff or your friends or maybe somebody will benefit from that that works with you. Well, whatever. It could be a lot. Of, it could be a variety uh, of tools for it. But this is the Monday morning. A lot of people do. Anyhow, if you're not interested in Monday morning, don't worry. Come back to it. Listen, I think more people come back to Monday morning than listen to it early on. Uh, I would definitely provide it to new employees. We are really, really push on that. But just to, just to remind you and how it works and so forth, if you'll remember, there's categories down there. And the categories are – all these are just different categories. I've, I've underlined some so you can see what they look like. But these are various categories, and they have tons of information in there. I sometimes am going to measure exactly how much, how much information is in there, but it keeps growing and growing and growing. And, you know, they're done by the best people. So I guess the question is now – what if you go into one of those? Well, let's 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 look at what if you go press on finances. Here's what you see: the Monday morning. That's the, it'd be a live link. It says uh, uh, consultant Al Diamond blah 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 has done this and this. Uh, here's my eye opener really for that one, uh, and so forth. So you're going to see a lot of really great stuff in there. You can look at it or not. If you question it, try the eye opener. That's what people do. Uh, if you went to the referrals category. Here's what you get, at least for starters, but there's a whole bunch more stuff down in there. I'm just, I have not shown you all. Remember now, this is Monday morning. This is not basics, but it is the same Monday morning. Uh, and here's what the information gets you. And, of course, that's not all bad, is it? 
uh, incidentally, good ideas that some agents have used is to take one or more of these and use them as the reference point for a staff meeting, a Monday morning staff meeting, Friday afternoon, whatever it is. That's a good idea. I like that too. Remember about the bottom, I said how to use Monday morning. You're going to find a link down there, which I just told you about, called Monday morning marketing and management basics. And it starts to explain that this is over and above Monday morning. And this is designed to give anybody in your agency who wants to know the basic aspects of all these independent agency uh, activities and services to go to them. And they'll continue to grow all the time. I say this occasionally, too, and I'll repeat it. If you have any basics that you'd like done for us or if you'd like to do any, let me know. The price is right. <laughs> Nothing to either of us, but it's a nice thing to do for the industry. Anyhow. Introduction to Monday Morning Marketing and Basics is on there, and you're going to be finding that when you go in. It'll tell about it. Now, we use some of the regular Monday morning mini webinars we've already had or already done because they fit into the basics. But generally speaking, they'll be a whole lot new ones because uh, they, uh, th th well, you'll see why, because you're going to, some of them are of interest, some of them are not. But generally, we're going to use every one we have in there. You'll still be able to get all of the regular Monday mornings, but you'll be so see some of them in here if they apply to that particular one. Now, why Monday morning basics? Well, there's just a bunch of us that just need the basics on everything. It's so communicative. I mean, the world is so overwhelmed, uh, uh, you know, and we all know that with communications. It's just difficult as anything. and You can't know everything about everything. And then there's the coverages we sell that are just... Uh, uh, we all know the coverages. Yeah, okay, we sell that. But what do we really know? What do we really know? What's the philosophy behind the coverages? Why are we having commoditization problems with uh, Geico of the world and so forth? Those are the things that we, we really kind of want to know. And, and, and I know that uh, there's a lot of staff members uh, who deal every day with something, but they really don't know. They get asked for uh, something about uh, umbrella insurance, and they're in uh, automobile or homeowners. They need to go in there. Well, it's going to be all be there. Now, this is not just bulk printing. This is this is philosophy behind it. What are the reasons that people want to buy and so forth? It's not too long, but you know, if you spend 40 minutes or one of them or 30, what the, you know, it's worth the money. Okay, I guess you know about that anyway. Now more quicker educational help so they can really understand your products, your tools, everything you're using. Okay, now why basics? Well, uh, growing number of topics uh, like agency management, holy mackerel, that's getting so confusing and, and, and it's just it's confusing. I'll be doing the hosting of each of these webinars. Good thing about having me host is I'm not in the agency business on a daily basis, so I don't know a lot of things that, you know, maybe I should but I can't know everything about everything, but you would. But anyway, I think you'll like uh, what we're doing because the, the presenters, they straighten me out. They say, hey, well, you, that's kind of a dumb question. And I say, well, you know, whatever. These are volunteers. Who's doing it? Really top people, the consultants. Uh, uh, the, well, you'll see, you'll see them when you go on in there. You're going to see a list, and they're really, really amazing. And again, they're doing it at no cost, no charge. Or no, they're not getting paid for it. They're just doing it. Uh, we're going to have all the contact slides in there with there, so you can get hold of them. I'm going to have all the books that various people have written right behind it and all that. So you, once you hear them, you know them. Might not be a bad idea to get this book or that book or whatever. And there's another tip on this. Monday morning basis, basics recorded webinars are going to be there 24-7. You don't have to worry about going in or going out or anything else. Anybody can go in. All you have to do is go to agencies online, click whatever, or roughnotes.com, and the, the it's on there. The archives are on there. So it works. Anyhow, what, what, what topics are we, are we going to have in basics? Well, here's, a, here's an evolving, uh, <laughs> evolving al alphabetical list, and, and some of these topics are already completed, as I told you before, but uh, there's going to be a lot more. So what am I talking about? Well, here, look at these categories. These are some really, really important basic operational categories. Yeah, insurance basics is up there, the coverages and all that, agency management and all that. But look at these things. They're very, very important to, to all of you, all the things. So maybe maybe huh, social networking, that was that to me is it, it saved my – I couldn't even speak social networking. I've got 5,000, incidentally, connections on social networking, and I didn't know what to do with them. Well, I will tell you this. I'm posting – thanks to the person who's teaching me about social networking, I'm posting Monday mornings on my 5,000 whatever each week. Not bad, huh? That helps. 
Of course, there's another 70 or 80,000 getting them too, but that doesn't hurt it either. Okay, so what happens, to, what happens when you go into, oh, let's go for the sake of argument, let's go to agency management. Okay, what's, what's going to be there? Well, here's typical ones. It looks like the other ones, yeah. Some of these were, well, as a matter of fact, these, these have been uh, created before. Uh, the, the, number, the date there is just the date we put them in, but the, these, these have been created before, so we're using them uh, as we have. Uh, but the basic categories in general uh, for which the many webinars or whatever we call them are created uh, are like this. You can see the like agency management system, Steve Anderson, uh, uh, commoditization. Uh, Scott Addis, you know, you'll know a lot of these people. They're really tough people, and, and I understand that. Here's what you see. There. Now, some of them like compliments, complaints, I mean, CRMs, the designations, Google. We haven't done those yet. We haven't even got anybody lined up, but we will because you know these people like to do this because they like the publicity. Here's a typical one now, new agencies. Well, Phil Tusi, who's been very helpful for me, he helped me put this whole thing together. He was an Iroquois. You know, it's an aggregation firm, regional manager, uh, and, and for a lot of years, and he was with the Selective Insurance Company for like 25 years. At any rate, he's now consulting with startup agencies. So he's already recorded one. Uh, as I'm talking to you now, we're going to record another one tomorrow. What are we, I mean, on uh, next week, and we're going to do uh, marketing and management and, and stuff like that. But that's the kind of good basic stuff you have. Now, who, well, you're not a new agency, I know, but what if you have somebody, what if you want to leave and start your own? I didn't say that. Okay. Here's the coverage. It's like, oh, now this is a good one. This is Bart Baker, the guy I told you about, and he's a tremendous, tremendous agent. And he uh, has, he is just a speaker of, of the best. He's already done automobile, uh, and so we don't have that on this list. But here are some of the coverages that we're going to go into in depth, explaining the coverages, explaining the endorsements, but more importantly, explaining the philosophy. Why? the philosophy because we want you not to be bullied by the commoditizers of the world, but to know good and well that there's enough differences in here from a good independent insurance agent that can make the difference to almost any buyer if explained properly, and we'll help you on that. Uh, here, here's one too I love, Randy Schwantz the Wedge. He's really good in sales, and he's uh, he, he's already recorded some stuff for us, but uh, these uh, various points here are each one of these is going to have a recording. I mean, a, you know, a Monday morning like type thing uh, on each of these and y your people, all of you, and maybe you, <laughs> maybe me. I don't know. Maybe I. At any rate, we'll, we'll, uh, we're going to have a, what's how many, 20 or something on that list there that he's going to be doing over a period of time. And you want to kind of go into that and see it. And hey, once again, you want to know what's in there so you can tell your staff members because there is no other recording uh, service or anything like this in the industry, to my knowledge, and I would know, I would think, right? Okay, now they're going to have training tools like you just can't believe. It, uh, this is going to be a great training tool for staff members, and I just keep coming back to it. I love it. Well, uh, here's some of the initial contributors. Uh, to the people who are working with us. I am, uh, going, each one I'm going to take a short time and they're not going to be long, but I ask these guys and gals to just tell us what are you going to be or, uh, uh, providing as a contributor to the new basic system? And, well, I'll just let you listen and I think you'll enjoy it. Randy Schwantz is the sales guy. That we all, we always, I always think of him that way, and uh, uh, he's the president of the wedge you've heard and seen, and I'm sure uh, know uh, Ran, uh, Randy Schwantz because he's been very visible for quite a number of years. And at any rate, I won't go into that right now because, but he is helping me tremendously or helping us on the basic sales situation. Uh, he's going to, well, in fact, you may have heard a couple of three weeks ago on the regular Monday morning, now this is not in the basics, where he did a really good. Uh, uh, explanation regular Monday morning on financial independence and, and elite producers and here here was the write-up that we did about him that uh, how to get the competition fire without saying anything bad about him and all that sort of thing at any rate he walks uh, he walked him through he walked everybody through for the elite producer and that was very well accepted and people liked it a lot of course uh, I've known him for many years and he's done a lot of work with us and in the meantime I, I said hey, Randy how about helping us out here on the uh, on the basics program and he says okay I'll be happy to help you out and he said here's what we'll do Randy what what is what is it we're going to do 
Yeah, so, so George, I mean, I, I look at these things right here. You can call them growth activators or inhibitors. And whether you're an agency leader, you know, trying to get your producers to a new level, or this is just you personally and you're the producer. It, it almost is in this order. And so let's just look at it real quick. Take your time. Uh, okay. Number one, if you're not, if you're not motivated, maybe let's look at it this way. You, my tagline is turning potential into profit. Yep. And so you sit there and kind of look at the gap between where you are and where you could be, and you just take motivation. Okay. You know, if you could ramp up your motivation another another 10, 20 points uh, and get you really fired up, get you really clear on what you want, why mm -hmm. you want it, get you focused, right. what's that going to do to to both short-term and long-term your wealth? Number two, time utilization. It's all about how you use your time. And so in each one of these things, I look at what's either going to activate it and enhance it and accelerate it or what might be inhibiting you right now. So we'll take time utilization as an example, an inhibitor. Too many small accounts, not clear on your goals, um, uh, service team is kind of weak, and so you end up spending all your time doing non-high non leverage activities, low leverage activities, where the flip side of that would be high leverage. So motivation, number one. Number two, time utilization. Number three, differentiation. Buyers want value. The more differentiation you have, the more black and white it is, the more it's going to accelerate and activate your growth. Pipeline. I mean, the, the thing we hear from agency owners all the time is, yeah, I mean, I've got some great producers. They just have empty pipelines. <laughs> so, <laughs> so you sit there and think about what's inhibiting that. Is it rejection? Is it is called reluctance? Is it not being well organized? Those are inhibitors. What are, what are activators? We'll get into all that. Selling strategy. I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but almost everybody I talk to says that every piece of business you want, that there's any money in it, there's always an incumbent. And so, you know, you got to look at your strategy to differentiate, your strategy to get pain in the buyer out of the buyer's head and create pain, and then strategy to get the incumbent seen as something less than, than capable. And then the next deal is closing strategy. Even when you do a good job of that, if you don't have a great closing strategy, the incumbent still sneaks in there, and if you're not careful, you get rolled. Mm -hmm. I got it. Again, we're, again, we're going back to inhibitors and activators. Renewal strategy. Um, I hear people all the, way, all the time talking about having to defend their renewal. If you could get out of defending your renewal, mm -hmm. and you could be in a much more of a, a, a proactive basis, renewals go easier, and the last is cross-only strategy. So when you get these eight things activated, accelerated, all it's going to do is drive a lot of money. So we're going to look at, over time, the inhibitors and the activators in all these areas. I think the key word there is over time. I, incidentally, I wish I'd have had this when I got started 100 years ago. Boy, oh, boy, would that have helped me over the years. Yeah. But at any rate, uh, you're going to take each one of these and we'll do it over time. Uh, and I think that you're going to, just, in the process, you're going to create a hell of a sales uh, course, a course, I guess uh, it is. And then, and then I, I'm, I'm so I'm so pumped on this thing. I don't know what else to say. Then you said it's in the words. and what do we mean? Yeah, well, um, I mean, I run into like I ran into this with my daughter this weekend. I run into it with producers all the time when making cold calls. And in fact, you look at the very last word on that page is philosophy. I'll sit there and go, "Well, what's your philosophy?" And 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 sometimes, many times, they don't know or they got some real generalized. So so we're going to start to break down these words and look at what they mean and the sub meanings. And uh, it might sound laborious on the front end, but I promise you, we're going to break these down again over time. And as you really start to understand it, it's going to give you a real insight in how to be better at building rapport, how to be better at building relationships, how to be better at asking questions, how to be better at qualifying a prospect, how to, how to leverage coverage better, all these things, how to find pain better, how to determine the difference between need and wants, and how we go leverage that. So we're going to be breaking down these words. It's going to be really cool. Wow. This is going to be the, uh, the number one marketing, I mean, sales course uh, for the industry. And I'm really glad you're doing this. I, I, and uh, I want everybody to know that I didn't make this up. I didn't come to you with this. You did it. I think, I think you've been looking for a real good reason to do this for the world, haven't you? I hope so. Because you already yeah. do it. You already do it with, with all the webinars you have and, the, and all that. I do. I do, yeah. I do. And, uh, I mean, everything I hear is really good. There he is. <laughs> uh, well, you, you're pointing it at to us. That means you're going to come at it, huh? So this yeah, is going to kind of bring it on ninja style. Bring it on, baby. You're going to do it. Oh, boy. Well, I'm really glad you're doing this, and I do appreciate it. And I know a lot of people are going to do that, too. So anytime, and you, uh, your, uh, your constructive criticism is always good, but you never will criticize. So take on it. Tell me what's wrong next time around, will you? No, I, 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 I love working with you. It's really fun. So.
workers' compensation is uh, very, very important to all independent agents, that, or most of them that I know. And uh, that's why I was very happy to get John Koppelman, who's with uh, Renaissance Insurance Group up in the uh, in Boston area, to uh, to work with us on the conference as the uh, uh, you know as a presenter. He's uh, John is uh, he's been 25 years around. He's a training guy. He he's worked with hundreds of agencies. He's written a lot of stuff. He's really Renaissance Alliance is, is, is a tremendous organization, and he's one of the one of the top guys. John, what are we going to be doing in the future? Well, this is uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. We are we're going to be looking at uh, three modules that uh, you and I have discussed uh, specifically for agents um, relative to the way workers' comp experience rating is actually done and a couple of the key areas that agents can and should be uh, involved in with their insureds, that being uh, claims reviews and temporary modified duty. So All right, we're going to look at, uh, right. this is a very hands-on approach here. Good. The, uh, and let me, let me proceed this by saying I just got a notice about Berkshire Hathaway um, getting involved in the direct selling of workers' compensation. Uh -huh. In other words, they're going to approach it the way Geico approaches automobile insurance. Oh my I don't see this as a big threat to agents because the agent role in workers' compensation is robust and, to my mind, eternal. And part of what we're going to be discussing in these three modules is the areas where agents should be involved with their insureds that kind of locks them in as a trusted advisor. All right. And these three areas are critical. There may be other areas that people are interested in, and I'll, I'll get into that a little bit at the end of the presentation. Okay, go ahead. First presentation is going to be around experience rating. It's complicated, but I try to make it simple. What's good about it is it is a report card on employers. It's unique in all of it uh, of insurance. And these report cards are always retroactive. In other words, when changes occur, in, in the experience rating itself, which has happened over the last three years, that um, it's retroactive. So employers are often getting blindsided by the changes that happen. All right. And the, and the history goes back five years. So if you had a bad year three years ago, you're going to see changes in the way you pay for insurance. It's right. very uh, painful. And finally, um, there's some question as to whether the mod is the best pr predictor of, of performance. But to me, it's a little bit like um, SATs or other uh, testing that we do for students. It is the exam that everyone knows. It's a report card that everyone gets. So okay. whether it's the best predictor or not remains to be seen. And we're going to look at how it actually works. And that means what data goes in, how do they, where does the data come from, what happens to that data, inside the black box of insurance <laughs> and what comes out is obviously the numbers that we end up with the experience rating uh, the mod and the arep where there are high losses so right. it's going to be fun and interesting i hope that's that's my goal and the agent's toolbox is under, in understanding this calculation you can bring that understanding to your insured it's a very important thing to be able to do and that will embed you as the trusted advisor all right. Your client. That's a great start. Let's go to the second one. The second area where I think uh, agents want to be involved is claims review. Uh, as a facilitator for agents, for, for uh, a, a facilitator role, a lot of uh, your clients, the larger ones, are probably already doing it. But even if they are doing it, I think the agent should be involved as a third party that has an objective view of what's going on with the individual claims. Right. We're going right. to talk about what it is, how to do it why you do it and when to do it. Timing is critical in the claims reviews. Uh, we want an open strategy, a strategy for every open claim, and we want to follow through with roles and responsibilities that might include the agent directly. But once again, we are building an agent toolbox that enables the agent to have a lasting relationship with their insured. Oh, that's beautiful. This is great. And finally, we're going to look at temporary modified duty. I think everyone understands that it's important, but they don't necessarily know how to go about it. It's the best tool in the employer's toolbox for controlling losses and costs. And we're going to look at the key elements in an effective program. Uh, that would be um, uh, how, uh, what, how exactly you set it up, what, what does a written program look like, how to use it well, not using it too much and not using it too little. 
once again, we're going to be talking about timing. And this is the agent's toolbox where the, the proper implementation of a temporary modified duty program really will help your insureds control their losses. So well, this is terrific because you're, you're going to be building and building and building on this thing over the t years time. This is going to be one. This is going to be, as I see it, the primary uh, learning tool for agents uh, in workers' comp, just to make sure if they're doing it right, if not, if not. But for new people too, this is going to be a beauty. And listen, I know that you uh, still do some consulting around, and I think that's great. And here's a way to contact you. And uh, you've already done the uh, first basics for us. It's on our basics program as of today. And uh, if you go in there, and you'll see a good article by uh, by John. And it's kind of an introduction to the agent's toolbox. So you'll, you'll hear a lot about that. And, John, I want to thank you again for being so cooperative and contributing your time and effort. It's been great fun, George. I look forward to doing these modules. And I, I encourage people to let me know if there are other areas they would like me to explore with them, such as uh, what is the course and scope of employment, when are people actually under workers' compensation, or perhaps compensability, what is covered, what exactly is covered and what is excluded. The uh, introduction to the basics is going to continue here with Bart Baker. He's going to be doing the personal lines uh, explanations of us, at least that, probably more along the way because he's a very prolific guy. Uh, and he is going to be talking about the personal lines part. And you heard it, we had our Monday morning last week, uh, and uh, you might have heard Bart then. He, here's who he is. He's a, a very successful farmer's agency, uh, one of the top guys in the country. Uh, he's an author. The reason I got hold of him, uh, he and he built. He was 25 years, in the, incidentally, in the uh, as a as a fireman. And but he started his own agency. It's very successful in Malibu. At any rate, and he's very verbal and he teaches. And at any rate, when I heard about him, I was so lucky to get talk to him because I I read his uh, two books. And this one is based on if the elephant sits on you, are you covered? We'll be talking more about that in the years to come and so forth. But he's got an unusual approach. And so what he's going to be doing is teaching the basics of the various basics insurance, and we'll show you the list in just a second, and with something different called the philosophy. What about the philosophy, Bart? What, why? Yeah, hi, George. Well, first of all, I just want to thank you again for the opportunity to speak with you and your listeners. I, 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 re I really appreciate it. Yeah. And um, the reason why, George, I feel that philosophy is so important and why it really needs to you know, start the conversation is that there's so much talk nowadays about insurance being a commodity, especially when we are talking about personal lines coverage, you know, auto and home and all of those other things. And why can't I just get this coverage at, you know, Geico and wherever it's, you know, just the least amount of, of, of price. And the people that tend to gravitate towards what we bring to the table, which is experience and, um, and, and knowledge on how to properly craft a policy, are those types of people that, that have assets typically, that want to be insured correctly. And a lot of times I find that the consumer just doesn't know that he doesn't know. And the worst time to find that out is that something happens and he doesn't have a vital component of coverage and he's out there all on his own. So you're going to so do a little just, philosophy uh, on each of these coverages then? Most most definitely. So um, during our our Monday mornings, we're going to be able to go into much um, more detail, and we're actually going to drill down on each line of coverage to get very specific as to why each particular line of coverage is important, how it applies to the total policy, um, you know, package. And um, you know, this part here on this slide that we have up right now, as far as you know, auto insurance, it, mm -hmm. really all this is stating is that we find that over you know 27 years practically of doing this is that when we get in the really large claims, um, they, they usually come in from a car accident. So everything's important, but auto insurance specifically just had so much more potential of getting into some pretty, some, some pretty large numbers pretty quickly that the philosophy, when it is explained to a customer correctly, that insurance is definitely not a commodity, and you're not talking about thousands of dollars in difference between dealing with a professional advisor to be able to provide this type of coverage versus doing it on your own is typically a couple hundred bucks. It's not a big difference in premium at all. I got so it. When our value yeah. is brought to the table, like like that, everything changes. I know it does. It's just amazing. You as you uh, and then I you went into the endorsements. There were a whole bunch of them. I didn't even know all these endorsements were there. But what you're really doing is explaining this down to the depth and 
and, and again, philosophically as well as the coverage itself. And I like that. Exactly. So you have on the screen right now, you know, just an endorsement for uninsured uninsured motorist property damage, and um, and, and this is just an example of the type of endorsement that um, most people don't really understand how it applies to your policy. But right. during our our talks, we're going to go into detail on every single one of these. So by the time you're done, um, you know, listening, is that you really are going to walk away hopefully with a much greater knowledge as to why a properly crafted policy, um, even for automobile, is incredibly important. So I didn't, when your customer uh, I didn't, has something happens and calls you, yeah. they're taken care of. I, I learned it last week from you when you when you did it. And then, of course, it's in the basics right now uh, already. So you already did this umbrella insurance. You went into great detail on that one. And that, you know, we all know kind of, we know how important it is. I don't know if the customer does or not, right? You went to uh, sure. an insured motorist. I, I, We've always heard of that, but you gave some examples, and now all of a sudden, and remember, we're not talking to the regular agent on a day-to-day -day basis here in the basics, as you proved last week with your thing. We were talking about the um, uh, the, the people who are not familiar with the, with the product, and that's who's going to be going into basics on, say, auto, and then you're going to have this list here. This uh, you got your work cut out there for you, man. Well, um, I, I, I do, but, um, you know, thankfully, um, the, the, the hard work has already been done when oh, we your put book. the book together. Yeah. If an elephant sits on you, are you covered? Because we, this, every one of these, um, you know, lines of coverage are discussed in detail in the book. And so we're just going to be putting together the slides and having the conversation around each endorsement that applies to each one of these coverages, you know, home and flood and earthquake and so forth. So that when you're done, um, you know, with your whole Monday morning around the basics on these coverage, you know, the goal is, is you know, to be, um, you know, considerably better educated than you were when you first started, hopefully. Well, you've done it, and uh, it's a great start. Here's the people who can get in contact to you. If they want to see your book, they can do that. I did. I, I got both of them in Amazon and did it. And uh, listen, I want to talk. I want to thank you again, Bart, for what you're doing to us because you're really laying the groundwork for what's going to be the most uh, – the, the the biggest uh, dictionary, no, that's not true, but the biggest library of basic information in the insurance industry, and you're the guy that's the basic of the basics. How's that? Hey, well, George, I really appreciate that, and I tell you, I just um, get so much information off of looking at the library that you have created. I think it's absolutely terrific, and I'm just um, you know thrilled to be able to add um, you know my part to it. So so thank you for everything that you're doing. No problem. We've only just begun. When I first started uh, thinking about basics, I uh, the thing that really made me go over uh, into a basic program was the fact that I knew so little about social media. I mean, I got like 5,000 contacts in LinkedIn and Facebook and like that, but I just didn't and haven't known how to use it very well. So at any rate, I, was, uh, I looked around, tried to find somebody, and uh, I found a couple of somebodies. Uh, Phil Tusi down in uh, Florida, and you're going to hear from him. He's one of our great presenters. And then Amberly Easterwood, and she's up in where? Amberly, Charlotte? No. Uh, yep. Charlotte. Uh, North Charlotte, North Charlotte. North yeah, you mm -hmm. were in Florida before. Remember that? But okay, let me show you, tell you about Amberly now. Yeah, Amber, let me show you Amberly. This will make her, make you feel better because she's the only. Let me. I'm going to get her picture up there just a second. Uh, Amber Lee, will you move your picture up there, please? <laughs> that a girl. All right. Uh, th it's much better looking at Amber Lee than the rest of us old guys in it. But at any rate, she was a licensed insurance agent. She's there. She uh, uh, she's a marketing person by 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 education, and she uh, has a simply social a marketing consulting organization that helps on social media. She's helped me tremendously on it already. And uh, she's going to be doing a lot of stuff on social media for us and because we're going to be telling the world about Amber Lee. And she's written some stuff in the books. And uh, she's uh, uh, she has a blog, Making Sense of Insurance. is really good, too. But we'll get you into that later on. Amber Lee, explain what, we, what you're going to do from social networking for us. Sure. So here we go. So basically, I'm just going to go over kind of the basics of social media and really get down to the nitty gritty of why it's so important that everybody who has, an, has a business um, needs to have it. It's a way to connect with uh, their consumers today. If you don't really have a social media account, you're kind of, you're off the grid, but you know, with a business, you don't want to be off the grid. So I'm just going to kind of get down to the reasons why it's so important 
to have social media profiles and then I'll also go over the basics of how to get started creating social media profiles and some tips and tricks on how to engage more with your consumers or even how to get consumers on your social media pages. Yeah, this list, uh, let's show that list that you're going to be doing for us here now. Uh, you're going to be doing three or four that we've already agreed on, which is great. Uh, mm -hmm. oh, well, now, we the first one we did already was social media, and it's yep. already on basics. So when you go in there, you're going to find the basics of social media and that, of, of social networking. I'm sorry. Well, either way. And, and I... Uh, uh, that that helped me tremendously. It kind of it kind of puts things into perspective. All right, and then you're going to follow up with. Go ahead. Sure. And then so next I'll follow up with LinkedIn uh, for dummies. So it's kind of the step before LinkedIn for dummies. It's very basic. Um, we'll be doing that presentation next. Yep. So if you have any interest in uh, LinkedIn, your professional profile, or even creating a profile for your business on LinkedIn, we can go over, I'll go over topics such as that um, in the next presentation. Good. And Good. then uh, after that, we'll be good at getting into Facebook. Right. Uh, how to, you know, create a Facebook page, how to create a personal Facebook page, sorry, a professional Facebook page, and just how to engage with your customers using that. Okay. Good. That's a good one. And then some more LinkedIn tips. So like I had mentioned, some tips and tricks that, you know, Facebook doesn't just come out right and say, you should do this to gather more followers or get more connections. So I'll be going over some tips on that. Right. And then for Facebook tips, I'll just be going over, you know, how do you get more likes on your professional page or your business page, um, things like that. And so yeah. those are just some of the things that we'll be going yeah. over in our next couple of presentations. You know, I mean, I, I think it's, it's ideal because, I mean, I know people, you say, well, help, give me a like. And I'm not sure what a like really means. And I, I, and, and I, post, uh, I post Monday morning on, uh, on my 5,000, um, what do you call them? For, how do you uh, design somebody you have link, a friends? Are they friends? Yeah, or they, connections. On, connections. Uh, link and call connections. All right. And, uh, but, I, you know, I go in there and I can't. At any rate, I'm going to after all this, and with your help, and uh, I'm going to keep doing NFT. If they want to get hold of you uh, now or later, uh, let's show your contact information here. Sure. And uh, uh, and I know that uh, you'll be happy to uh, work with them. Um, yeah. So it's Amber Lee, but you can call her Amber uh, Easterwood, and uh, there she is. You can tweet her or whatever or connect with her. I'm, I'm not on tweets either, Amber Lee. I tried, but I wasn't very good at it, and I gave it up before I even got too far in it. But any rate. Uh, she's more than happy to talk to you, and she'll be uh, she'll be our main source of authority on this. I hope for many years to come. So, Amber Lee, I thank you again for working with me, for helping me, helping me understand how to get the, the uh, email addresses of all of my people. That was great. They, they, you really came through on that, and uh, I, I look forward to working with you. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, George, and thank you everybody for listening. Yeah. Another subject that uh, Basics is going to be spending time and effort on so that to help you out is the subject of new agencies. And we know there's a lot of new agencies that need this kind of thing, and that's a great thing. And uh, so I was uh, uh, lucky when I was putting this all together. I got hold of uh, Phil Tusi, and Phil's down in Florida. He was with the Iroquois Group for a long, long time, and uh, he's had a tremendous background. There it is. You can come back and see it later if you like. He was 21 years with Selective Insurance Company. At any rate, he... Uh, thought he was going to retire, and I wouldn't let him. No, that's not exactly true, but uh, yeah, he and I have been working together to uh, uh, to develop uh, some of this information, and he's really been the, one of the great uh, uh, motivators to me to do this whole thing. Uh, so, Phil, what, uh, what are you going to talk about, okay? Yeah, exactly, George. Um, why an agency needs a, a written marketing plan? Um, there are a lot of reasons, and... Set the course is just one, but that's your roadmap. Where are we going? How are we going to get there? Then professionalize. Uh, you should, an agency should want to stand out from the competition. And, and this also, this does a multiple of things. It shows carriers and partners that you have a focus. And the initiative to develop a written marketing plan. And then in terms of, of competing, I see this in a number of different ways. You will certainly want to compete in the marketplace, and so you need a roadmap. But you also compete for good producers. 
um, the good ones will see that you have a real direction if you have a written marketing plan and, and they're considering you. Well, I, uh, they may see that. Yeah, yeah. The other agencies don't necessarily have this this, this type of a mark of a road map. I don't think most agencies have it. I don't think most agencies have it. I think you're right. So this is for for new young agencies. Then you uh, a lot of them get asked to go to uh, agency networks, and uh, I think that's yeah, really right. interesting. We've already de done one this one year. We'll be that's on it. right. And and, and we, we talk about the investigation here. Uh, we're going to arm the agents to be their own detectives. Yeah, good know. idea, right? And, yeah, yeah, and we need they need to know the right questions to be asking and the significance and the importance of each of those and we'll give some examples actual situations and we i think that's going to be very helpful to uh, agents that may be in that situation or considering it yeah i do too i we're talking about aggregators or clusters or whatever they call the thing but uh, most people never saw those questions they just get contacted so i thought that was a very good one that you did and it's already on basics so when you go to basics and you go to uh, new agents You'll find uh, you'll find that one there, and that's a good one. And then you you've got other things that you're going to be working on too. This is interesting. Yes, and, and yeah, and also when they, I run into some of these same folks, they're transitioning from a captive to an independent agent, and uh, there's a lot of agencies out there considering it. It's a brave new world for yeah. some, for sure. Oh, you know. Uh, it is. So we try to give you. Oh yeah, we try to give you some examples of situations that could be helpful to agents when they're considering this. You know, what is needed, what's expected, how to get guidance, uh -huh. how to acquire the needed markets, and, and other points, but we're gonna to try to bring some real life situations into that one too. We, we, we will. That's great, because knowing you, I'm, you're gonna be thinking about a whole lot of other things, and I'm really glad you're doing this. It's terrific, because you're, mm -hmm. you're uh, all the time that you spent with the Iroquois group, which is a, one of the first, I guess it was the first, or one of the first, aggregators and yeah. then going from this one and then you dealt with captives you guys did you ever take any uh captives into uh, uh coming into independent agencies at, at, at iroquois yes we did and some were successful and some weren't uh <laughs> it was um it, it, and, and these were some of these were in the early years when uh, well I, i'll explain it when we get together okay and, and, right. and but but uh some interesting situations and, and i will uh, explain those and explain what happened and maybe that'll be helpful to someone well, who, i think it will fall so. into the same situation. well here's uh, uh here's contact information for phil and i think it's uh, mm -hmm. uh very important that the people have this you can always come back to this monday morning and and see this but of course you can also go to the uh the basics and you're going to see a lot of stuff with phil and you can get hold of him there and he's very helpful and now he's consulting with some stuff and i think that's a neat idea yeah. So, uh, Phil, thank you for this. I appreciate it. And thank we will, you, well, our pleasure. And uh, uh, I'll be I'll be recording you some more. See you soon. Okay. Absolutely. Video is getting so big. Everybody knows how big it is. It's going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Somebody said there's going to be 85% of all communications are going to involve video or voiceover or something. And uh, that's why I got to Mike Demko and asked. Mike to uh, to let us all know how to really use video, how to really use YouTube. We're going to start with that one. Uh, Mike is uh, uh, that's his business. He really does it well. I've been working with him. He has something called My Insurance Videos, and he does a bunch of them for agents. And I won't go into detail now because when he does his uh, presentation uh, later on on YouTube, we're going to start with YouTube, aren't we, Mike? Sure. Just, yeah. We're Go ahead. There's a, lot, there's a lot of different ways uh, to use video, and what I'm going to talk about is how top agents are using video and YouTube to drive growth and retention in their agency. There's a lot of different types of videos we could create, or we'll review some of the best practices. Of course, why work with my agency is a great one, customer testimonials. Birthday, holiday, birthday and holiday videos to stay top of mind with your book and more personally touch them on these important days. Agency owners have done meet the staff or bio I like videos, those. Yeah, I, I, I like those. Onboarding, here's who you're going to deal with kind of thing. Our agency in the community, uh, everyone's got a smartphone these days, which is a video recorder. There's great ways that you can literally take that out of your pocket and document some of the things you're doing to be involved in the community. And, of course, some of the more advanced agents are doing explainer videos for the coverage types and answering some frequently asked questions about the value of insurance 
and explaining the types of coverage and, and many questions that uh, insurers or prospects may have. Which we're doing with our basic program now with the uh, voiceover thing, the same kind of same kind of thing, just a different different medium, but uh, they're both good. Uh, you uh, uh, YouTube, I never have quite understood uh, how to have. A, uh, all the details of it. I never had to deal with it. And I think that's going to be good how to get your account and everything that you're going to be yeah, doing. Yeah, so we'll do we'll do a quick overview of how to set up a YouTube account, some of the key YouTube settings, the pros and cons of YouTube, because believe it or not, you know, YouTube's a free platform open to anyone, but there are some key things that we'll want to review to make sure that we get the most out of that platform and talk about some of the cons about associated using with YouTube. But of course we also have alternative to YouTube YouTube as a hosting platform that many other agency owners are using. So we'll have a, a brief module on that. That's going to be really good. I, I'm glad. I'm looking forward to this. You know why? So I can learn too. Okay. Absolutely. Well, and then the other thing about this is video is not just for your website. As mentioned, many of the best practices out there are not just relying on this video to be on your website, but it's agency owners using this video in their monthly newsletters when quoting, when cross-selling and rounding out accounts, of course, with birthdays and holidays as well. And then we'll also touch on using video in social media because there are some differences that you want to be aware of. And, you know, quite frankly, the, you know, video is useful in any sort of communication, whether it's email, your website, and on social media. And there are just some differences that we'll touch on throughout this presentation. Oh, that's terrific. I, I know I don't use video on my social media. I have 5,000 contacts or something like that. More, and I don't I, – I use my – I put Monday morning on there. Uh, but, but, you know, it's voiceover, not, not video. But I see some videos on it, and they're awfully good. Well, Mike, listen, I, I thank you for helping us get this thing started. It's just perfect. Uh, we've already done one uh, – uh, one recording with you, but now we're going to be doing for basics for a little while. Get you back in that. Here's how you can contact uh, Mike, and uh, I think we all, I, I think the whole world has to see this, Mike. I'm really, I'm really proud that you came with me on this. Well, I appreciate to be a part of it. Look forward to delivering continued value content to your subscribers and independent agents out there. Well, we're we're on it. Thanks again. One of the major um, uh, basic subjects is going to be on aggregations or aggregators or whatever you want to call them. They've got a lot of names over the years, but the guy that knows about as much as anybody and the guy who started them from scratch long when they were just getting started was Bruce Cochran at the Renaissance Group in uh, New England. He's in Boston area, but he's got 70, I mean, 100 agencies or so uh, around there, and they are uh, have been doing beautifully over the years. Uh, I can tell you a lot of stories about him. Bruce has already uh, done a couple of aggregation uh, uh, interviews for us, which were very good. Uh, and, the, and the business is really going. Uh, how's business this year, Bruce? Oh, business is booming. We have over $500 million of premium under management at this oh. point. All right, all right. Well, I, don't, I want to hear you now. So speak up and tell me about it. I'm proud of you. Five hundred, a million, half a billion dollars. Holy mackerel! Bruce has a wonderful background. He started his own agency years ago. He uh, he's been the president of everything in sight, including the association, the local association, Boston Underwriters. Uh, where in 1985 he nominated me for Man of the Year, which I really appreciated. Nobody else ever had, so I always remembered that. So I've been been kind to him ever since. And also he uh, uh, he he started. Uh, he he's very very active in a lot of uh, organizations, but workers' compensation. He's very very big about it. We don't have time to talk about it now, but. It's, uh, he's quite a person. There's your contact information about him. Well, Bruce, we've already talked a little bit about aggregators, but uh, as we go forward here on basics, how are you going to make it bigger and better or longer or whatever? Well, as you know, George, aggregations uh, of any form here, there are all kinds of names for it. Uh, let's just call them generic groups. Uh, yeah. It's becoming a major way in which insurance agencies are going to be able to face the challenges going forward into the future. But yeah. I think a lot of uh, agents don't really have a full understanding of, of what what aggregations are, what are they supposed to do, uh, and what types of aggregations there are out there. And so we want to talk in more depth going forward about again, what is an aggregator, what is the purpose of an aggregation, uh, uh, issues and challenges facing independent agencies going forward. These are the reasons why agents need and, and uh, discover the need to form uh, groups with other agencies in order Sorry. to be able to create the kind of scale they need uh, to be able to meet these challenges. And then uh, Dan Burris 
talks a lot about uh, hard trends and soft trends, and I think that's a, a big point in being able to see into the future and, and what is what is going to be sticking and what is going to be uh, continue, continuing a trend. Uh, and so we want to talk about that. Uh, there's this whole issue of change. What is change, and, and why should I change? Should I care about changing? Uh, and, and, and I have a lot of things to say about that. Our, our agents will tell you that uh, they hear nothing from me but about how, how we must change and the <laughs> things we must, must do going forward. Uh, and then uh, we want to get down to the question of uh, the, uh, uh, the forms of aggregations. What are the advantages and disadvantages of, of each of these forms? Uh, there, are, there are two or three basic types. Uh, and uh, then why should an agent join an aggregation? Of course, a lot of that has to do with the answers to the questions on, on the on the first slide there. Yeah. And then once one wants wants to uh, begin uh, prospecting for an aggregation or looking into an aggregation, what are the things that uh, an agent should look for? What are the things that differentiate mm -hmm. uh, the aggregator from from other aggregators? Sorry. Uh, and then of course Pretty it all carding. ties into the agency te technology and data conundrum. Uh, so they, we, want to, we want to drill down in, in a number of these issues and give agents a really good handle on this whole yep. arena of aggregations going forward. You know, I can't imagine why an agent wouldn't want to be a part of an aggregation. I sure as heck would. I said that before, but boy, oh boy, I'd want to be with my, my buddies and learn. And, 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 and uh, I, I, know, I know there's a lot of downsides to it to the wrong people. And uh, I'm sure you'll tell those too. Uh, knowing you, Bruce, you'll say the pros and the cons, right? Well, it's not right for everybody. That can't be, uh, yeah. Right, but but for the right for the right agency in the right circumstances, it's a home run. Well, I appreciate what you're saying there, and I want everybody else to know that uh, that we'll be doing a lot more. We're going to have so many bases. We're going to have 135 uh, of the regular Monday mornings done by the end of December of this year, and then we're going to be having I, I maybe we have 20 or 30 uh, of the basics being worked on right now. We'll have a list there. If you want to go into it, you go uh, go to the uh, agencies online, which you see up there. You can hear it and see it and so forth. Uh, as I told Bruce earlier, we have like 80. Excuse me. I'm sorry about that. Everything going crazy here at one time. And uh, it, and so what we're doing is to uh, uh, get we're getting this out to so many people now. I wish 80,000 people opened it. That's not the way it works. But anyway, you can go into the agencies online. You can see the Monday morning and the Monday morning uh, basics. Now we have a new uh, heading here uh, today and uh, or tomorrow we'll have it. But I'm, I'm quoting before we made it live. But tomorrow we'll have it new, and it'll be say it says Monday morning basics. You go there and get right to it. You'll see it. You'll like it. Tell your staff, uh, uh, register, subscribe your entire staff. It doesn't cost anything. Let's get them all in there if we can. Let's make that eighty thousand, hundred eighty thousand. Bruce, again, I thank you for all the good work you've done and helping us. And for the rest of you, I'll see you next Monday morning.